Hello, I am Suzanne Spooner, and this is an official QHHT session segment. Cobbles. Tell me more. Cobbled streets. Um, medium sized stones. They're not large, they're not small. Okay. What colors do you notice? Gray and blue. Okay. And what else do you see as you look around? White buildings. <clears throat> and uh, it's very lively. Lots of people. Oh, nice. Can you describe what the buildings look like? Uh, they look... They're white. They look like some form of mud, but not quite. They're very exact. They're sharp features. Okay. Are they more than one story? Yes. Definitely. Nice. And... Um, any other features about them stand out? Uh, I see some timber, some wood as well. They're old. The buildings are old? Yes, but they're still strong. Okay. And the lively people that you notice, describe what they're like. They're happy. They wear white, mostly, but some colors... Um, sashes, scarves. Shoes. What do their shoes look like? Red, brown leather. Okay. And you said there's quite a few there? Mm -hmm. Quite a few people? Mm -hmm, yep. You're doing really good. Now let's do this. Let's bring your focus to yourself there. Mm -hmm. When you look down, do you see your feet? Yeah, I'm barefoot. Barefoot, okay. And no shoes for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as you move up the body, um, describe what you wear on the body. Uh, first of all, I'm brown. My skin is brown. Okay have a robe, there's blue and gold trim, uh, some form of a s staff or walking stick. Nice. And is, that, is there anything special about that staff that you notice? It's, uh, it's very smooth and it's, it's just, just a stick. I mean, it's it's crooked, but it seems, um, I don't know, it seems special. It feels special, I guess. Okay, very good. And um, do you notice any jewelry or ornamentation on your body? No. And anything you wear on your head? No, there's, there's a hood, but don't like to wear it. Okay. A hood on the robe? Yes. Okay. And um, does the body feel more male or female? It's a man with a beard. Okay. Long, a long beard. Okay. Old. Old? An old mm. man? Yeah, gray. Okay. And um, does the body feel healthy or not? Very strong. Perfect. And do you get a sense of how you spend your days? What do you do all day? I walk the city and observe 
and decide. What Des do you decide about? Decide if things are, if they're going well, if people are fine, if the city's, if the city's fine. Okay. Very good. And so is there anything else going on there at that time with that you're seeing the lively people in the white buildings? Uh, it seems like normal activity. Okay, so all's well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Let's leave that scene that you're looking at. Mm. Let's drift and float to where it is you eat and sleep at, where you live, and now you're there. Mm. And describe for me from the outside what that looks like. Uh, it's a gold tower. Oh, tell me more about that. Actual gold. Um, and it, from, from the balcony, you can see the majority of the city itself. And when you go inside, describe what you notice inside. Stone, uh, large slabs of stone, but I don't know what they are. Uh, it's very simple. A table, some chairs. They're all stone. The tables and chairs are stone? Yeah. Okay. And it comes to a, the building is pointed. It's like a pyramid on top. Oh, nice. Is there a reason for that, do you think? Yeah. It's for, um, har it's for energy. It's for harnessing energy. Tell me more about that. Uh, the tower is... Um, it's above an energy source. And for some reason, this building being here actually creates or uh, captures energy. It captures energy. And then what happens with the energy that's captured? You use it for... Um, spells, incantations. Oh, that's interesting. In, um, invocations. And are you a part of that? Yeah. Okay. Are there others that live there in that tower? Is it yeah. A, a lot of, um, yes, a lot of uh, people, a lot of people that are dressed like me. It's a community uh, <coughs> smelling an herb. Is it, say that last part again? I'm smelling an herb. You're smelling an herb, okay. I don't know. There are a lot of people there who the job is to uh, observe and, and um, pray, invoke. Okay. So the group's job is to pray or invoke and use that energy that the building's harnessing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are there others in the community that aren't involved with that, I wonder? Most people aren't focused on that. Okay, so this is kind of a smaller group? Yeah, they all know what we're doing, though. Okay. They all like it. Okay. <laughs> okay, very good. Anything else going on there that day that you noticed that you went to mention? It's just beautiful. It's... The weather is great. People are happy. Everything's going well. Nice. Okay. Do you gather for meals with the others? Sometimes. Sometimes we end up eating together. Everybody has a, their own schedule. Yeah. So when you do meet together, what is that like? What types of food do you eat? And hmm. What's the gathering like? Um, when we meet together, there are times we are supposed to meet together. That happens at the below ground. Oh, tell me more about that. Uh, seems like there's a big room under under the ground, and it's um, it's dark gray stone, and that's that's where the that's where you're supposed to call for the energy. That's where you make your invocations. Okay. And, and that's supposed to happen together. As a group. Mm -hmm. A bunch of 
Yes, a lot of people in a circle. And so what would be some of the examples of the invocations that your group uses? It's for it's for the universe to al to align in a positive way. It's, seems like it's not specifically for the city, but it all it applies to the city as well. And I think that's why I like the city. I, I like the city. I want it to be taken care of. Okay, that the work goes way beyond the city it sounds like. Yeah, there's something important about th that s place on earth and that it's protected. Why do you think that place is protected? What's so special about that area? It's a node. It's an energy node. Mm -hmm. It's on that planet, it's supposed to be very special. It's like the only reason why, mm, not the only, the main reason why people were brought, uh, were brought there. Well, can you tell me more about that? It was, we're all f from there now. But the people were brought there for, I don't know why, something to do with this energy. Okay. And so it feels like that place is on Earth or somewhere else? It's here. It's mm -hmm. here. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that information. Okay. So let's do this. Let's leave that scene you're looking at. Let's mm -hmm. drift and float to an important day in that life that you're viewing. Drifting and floating to a day when something important is happening, and now you're there. And now what do you notice? It's burning. What's burning? Uh, the whole city. What happened? Something from the sky. Uh, something fell from the sky. And came up... Hmm. Came up from below. I don't. I don't understand. You were down below when it happened. No, nope, I'm at the top right now. Okay. So something came up from down below. Yes. Yeah. Something came from below and from above. Oh my goodness. So what are you thinking as you're taking all that in? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That it's unfortunate, but that was supposed to, it's, it's the natural course. Wow. And so what do you do next? I'm going to leave. I, there's, it's time for me to move. I, I'm not done yet. So where do you feel like you need to move to or leave to? West. Going west. And um, so what is that like when you leave? Are others going with you? Are you on your own? I'm taking some my close people that I'm close to with me. And how is it that you guys are traveling? Boat. Okay. It's an island. That's where you're headed to? No, that's where we're at. Oh, coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay. And once you get on the boat and you're looking back, what is it that you see? What do you notice? It's, it's all burning. It's Everything is raucous. Everything is, the, the water is worse. What's the water like? Uh, it's crashing up against the shores. Um, th which are, I'm looking at cliff faces, and it's crashing up against them, which happens in storms, but it's not stormy, it's still, um, it's still sunny, but 
smoky and really very windy. And you mentioned something came up from below. What was that? A fissure, a crack. Okay. It's a crack. A crack, okay. And do you have a sense of what came down from the sky? I think it's meteors. Okay. I think it's stones. Okay. And did you have any advance knowing about any of that? I think we suspected, but no real way of knowing. And so what happened to that structure you were in with the pyramid on top? It deflected a lot. Not, not everything um, could get destroyed while that was still there. But uh, it was only going to last for so long. The energy there was very strong. And it protected a lot of things, but it couldn't protect everything, so it shrank down around itself to buy time for uh, evasion, to leave. Wow, that's amazing. Did you witness that happening? Well, I, I was, yeah, I left. So things just didn't hit it until much, much later. Okay. Were you able to take anything with you? Essentials. Essentials. Um, some books that are important. What are the books about that you brought? Mm, engineering books. Hmm. Tell me more about those. Um, it, it's my job to to do the next step and those books are going to be important um, we have to go yeah, we have to go teach people how to, how to do this now how to kind of recreate what you had? yeah we have to go teach people how to um, geomancy say that again? geomancy we have to teach people how to use the energies of the earth for spells and invocations. All right, you're doing really good. And as you look back, how is it that you learned those spells and incantations? Passion um, and generations of, of knowledge. L the library. In, in the tower, there's a library. Oh, and tell me what that library was like. Oh, it was just every book that mattered. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. There were a lot. Um, a lot of books that aren't going to be saved. And there's a lot of books about uh, about where we came from. And they won't. They won't make it. Well, I think they won't make it. Who knows? Yeah. But you were able to grab some books. The the things that I need to to create um, more temples and uh, do what I can to not lose everything that we've been trying to build. You have to pick. If the, what are you going to pick, the history or the engineering? And you pick the engineering? Yeah. Without, I mean, it would be forever to figure that out again. Do you think the others that are with you also grab some books? or? No, they're just um, innocents. They're just, they grab their kids. They grab their, um, what is that, baskets of something. And the boat that you're on, can you describe what that looks like? It's, it's very wide, it's very long. There are sails, but we can't use them. Um, it's just too windy from the, from the fire raging. So there's oars and there's people that are... Um, it's, it's organized, though. It's like these guys are professional, they know what they're doing. And they're evacuating. So are there some that don't get a wave 
Oh yeah, most of them. How quickly did it seem to come upon you, the destruction, was it? Started overnight, um, something fell. It woke some people up, it woke us up, because that's part of what we do is we pay attention to everything going on on the planet. And um, that happened. And uh, then over the course of hours, you know, from darkness into light, other little things would start, you know, the shaking. Oh, a shaking, an earthquake, an earthquake. Okay. That's what maybe it was causing that fissure that mm -hmm. what came from below. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I knew what was going to happen before it happened. And, and then it started raining a lot of very small meteors, which were uh, not fully burned up, but burning. And it just started pelting the buildings. And it caused fires. I, I, don't, I didn't expect them to cause fires. I thought they would just be fissures and explosions. But actually catching thatch, the roofs and... Right. Wow. So, do you stay on the boat for long? Weeks. Uh, weeks and weeks. There's enough room for, and, and uh, provisions to make it um, to, to another continent, to another mainland, not the island. And do you get a sense of what it'll be like when you arrive there? green and <laughs> I hate to say it but savages, <laughs> savages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah bones in their noses and stuff that interrupts their energy lines and they don't know it okay very good very interesting so once you arrive there then what happens Uh, we have to make contact, and um, we have to make ourselves seem great because they're kind of, they kind of eat people. Oh, okay. Don't want to be eaten, right? No, but we're way, I mean, we're, we're, they, they couldn't possibly actually take us. We just don't want to hurt them. They're perfectly fine people. They're just low down on the totem pole. So you say you make yourself seem great. How do you do that? We we make some demonstrations uh, of our knowledge beyond just writing, which is they can't comprehend. Um, we do a few things that we call tricks. They're magic. It's it's um, very low level stuff. You know, making things float. Not a big deal, but it, it can be done with just uh, the right stones in the right places. Oh, interesting. What do you make float? Sticks, rocks, just enough to wow them, you know. It's not, it's, it's a waste of the Earth's energy to make s stuff float for fun, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Has to be a reason, and th all of that matters, it's not all... The Earth's taking a hit right now. We don't want to waste more energy than we have to, but we, I mean, we have to show them that we're special and they need to take us to a camp and because we're going to need food and water and it's easier if we can just integrate in than establish ourselves. And you said a while ago that you, your group watches over Earth. How do they do that? Oh, this, that's not the only tower. Tell me more about that. We have brothers around the world who are, um, some of them have already built and some of them are supposed to be building. But not, like, not many. Mm -hmm. We're not 
That's why this is such a setback. It's so it's difficult to grapple with. Because things are going pretty good. And yeah, and it's, it's the end of my term or near, and uh, we didn't get the plan done. Do you get a sense of who created that plan? Someone that's not from the planet. Someone. They're. They want the planet to succeed. They love the planet. They're very stern, though. And they're it's they're very willful. They expect the planet to succeed. They want results. And with those brothers that have created... And it's neither he nor she. It's both. Is this is a hermaphrodite. This is some... And it's part of... It's normal for the for this species. It's who they are. Understood. Um, with the other towers that were placed around the planet, how do they interact or how does that help you understand what's going on in other places you have to use um, you have to feel it it's if if you can feel it you can you know and it's uh, the, the books don't teach you that they try to teach you that but the books don't actually teach you that you actually have to practice it over and over and over again for a long time until you can pick up the messages. Were you able to do that? Yes. And tell me what that was like as you were receiving the message. You had to trust yourself a lot. And you almost have to be... People call you arrogant. But you have to be really sure. Or you won't even get the message. If you're not confident, you will not get it. And the first step is the hardest. You have to learn how to listen for the message. And if you're not listening, if you have a single doubt, if you're not listening for that message hard enough, you won't hear it. But you can't be pushing. You just have to, like, relax. And, and you hear it through your heart. And you have to believe what you're hearing. Once you've learned how to do that, and and then afterwards you're always looking to verify, is that right? Did I get the message? And then you lose it. You have to hear the message, and you you have to trust it, and it's that's it. And you have to do whatever it is to make whatever adjustments you're supposed to make whatever uh, stones need to be shifted or, or um, ley lines need to be emphasized. You're supposed to do it, and it's all got to happen by feel. How do you emphasize the ley lines, for example? Um, so the streets are built on ley lines. They, they all uh, come out from the, from the temple. The temple's at, at, the, there's at the middle of things. And if you need to emphasize a ley line, you can do it a variety of ways. It depends on what you're supposed to do. You can wash it. You can um, uh, just pour water down the street, and that changes that energy. You can, I mean, we try to do it in a way that doesn't disturb regular life because the people don't, they don't need to know everything. It can be, it can, they start to gossip, and it's just, gets in the way. So you can take a cart and fill it with crystals and, and just walk it down the street and nobody knows what's in it. You're just maintaining it. You're taking care of it without disturbing the normal flow of life. Hmm. And um, thank you for that. That's mm -hmm. fascinating. And when you... You get to know you're lucky. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I, I feel very lucky. <laughs> it's fascinating knowledge. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So when... Just as an example, what was a message that you received so I could kind of understand what that's like? 
um, an energy shift, perhaps um, the, the access the access is moving too quickly. Um, gravitational uh, um, wave from something off in a distant space. We don't need to know all those things. They'll, they'll tell us what we need to know scientifically, but we need to be able to feel those changes and make the adjustments. We don't exactly know precisely why. Sometimes the sun has a flare, and we can feel it. We can feel it needs either... Uh, the ley lines need either fire, water, or stone most of the time. Sometimes it's just air, and that one's easy. That's easy, because there's already air everywhere. And... and you're supposed to counteract whatever happened. And it's it's complicated stuff to know exactly what counteracts what. And if you get it wrong, you can make it worse. That's, where the, that's why I grabbed the engineering books. Okay. Otherwise, the whole planet could fail. Wow. So the, so the people like you at the different temples are... In communications when things like this are occurring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you send out a message, what is that like? That's harder, actually. You have to you have to be in the top of the temple, and apparently that's where I live. Yeah. So you have to be there. There's a very specific spot where if you, it's in sort of in the middle, but if you sit, you can. L- you can look out of the windows. It's windows on all sides, uh, not windows. But they're open air on all sides. And you can sit, but amazingly, no breeze. <laughs> you can sit and you can look out in whichever direction you need to look. You have to imagine the place that you're giving the message to. You have to imagine it as if it's sitting right in front of you. And then you just think about the information that you're trying to impart but it's harder because you are constantly thinking well what if they're not listening and and it's just the mind is obnoxious sometimes and you just have to all you have to do is think of the thing think imagine the place think the thought and you're done but you're constantly interrupting yourself do you ever get confirmation back that your message has been picked up? No. It's part of the trust process, and without the trust process, it won't work at all. No no confirmation. Okay. Wow. Okay. Did that take long for you to learn how to do? A lifetime. Now i got to go build a new tower. Were you involved with building the tower that you were in? No, that happened generations. I mean, it was it's the biggest tower, it's the tallest tower. And it's it's very hard to build a tower of gold that tall. How did how was that completed? It's not all gold, it's gold um on the surface. Okay. That's part of the reflection. That's part of what reflects Ener- deflects energy away. Okay. Uh, and they're very large, they're very large blocks. I mean, if you know you're building a large tower, you have to start with large blocks. So this one was intended to be very tall. So it takes a long time to get those large blocks to an island. To an island. An island. Okay. So. It took generations, hundreds of years. If I can ask, how did they place those blocks so high up then? That must have been... The levitation process. It's not to be trifled with. Okay. And those are large blocks. It takes a lot of the Earth's energy. Can you explain that process to me? Yeah. um, It has to do with stones, crystals, and um, the right elements. I see pink crystals and white crystals. 
and there's something purple and they have to be placed around it um, at the corners or um, the connection points which most people think of as corners um, but it's connected within the the greater there's a, there's a grid around the planet and if you place these stones at the connection points and you place the item within it um, and you pour the right energy into those then it can have uh, effects that counter gravity which then allows those things to be raised, lowered, moved left, right, you know, within the three dimensions more easily. Oh, once they get high up, though, that's d difficult, so um, it takes way more effort and experts. And if you have the wrong thought at the wrong time, Ooh. it just comes, <laughs> so it takes a long time. Focused energy, it sounds like. Mm, mm hmm. Yeah, this you had no room for um, doubting at all. Second thoughts, second guesses, you needed one mind, and that's part of why we didn't want to disturb the regular people because they were all of one mind. They were all happy. It was so, we had the machine moving, it was going well. Yeah. Now we have savages. In those towers, just out of curiosity, there are different structures than what some would call a pyramid? Uh, they're pyramidal on top, at least this tower. Mm -hmm. um, however, we're going to switch to pyramids. Yeah, I if the two it's structures were interconnected around the earth that way, or there's some new ideas from some of the younger um, engineers, oh. um, and they're saying that the, the pyramids are simply more efficient and less um, less destructible oh. than the towers are. Okay, so they, so that you're saying that the towers came before the pyramids? Yeah, the towers were the first idea. Okay. Well, gosh, thank you for that information. Anything else about any of that that you want to share? No. Yeah. That's, that's it. Okay. So let's leave that scene. Let's drift and float to another important day in that life. And now you're there. And now what do you notice? Um, youth, young... Um, young people this looks like we're growing yeah that's it's not that far in the future though I don't have there are not many days left for me okay so you're you where you landed with the savages <laughs> and now there's unfortunate which, there's younger people around <laughs> mm -hmm. our our people Your young people yeah I mean there's the, the others um the, the group that we came to they're we're trying to uh, trying to bring them along we're trying to, to to help them up the ladder um, they've already they've already stopped eating people which is good okay <laughs> <laughs> but they still got the bones and stuff they, they just they're working with it okay they don't quite understand us but the, and they don't fully trust that we're not going to hurt them but we actually we love them they're they're humans do you live amongst them yes we're, we're trying to fully integrate um which is always a challenge mm -hmm. we're trying to fully without lowering ourselves we're trying to bring them up it's it's you can't do it without that i mean it's got to happen eventually and if, if your philosophy isn't pure from the beginning, you're never going to make it. I understood. Lots to take into consideration, it sounds like. Mm. How has it been 
now at this point, um, using your knowledge with the engineering, are you able to capture some of the energy or the, the work that you've done before? Really basic stuff. We've identified a site, um, but it's just, it's all jungle. And it's um, just crawling with snakes and it's not, it's a great site, but it's um, going to take a lot of work. It's, and no site will ever be as good as the island was. And now, I mean, you can't build a pyramid under the ocean, so forget it. So, I wonder, has anybody in your group been back to the island to see? It's what? gone. It's gone? It's gone. Wow. It's gone. We sent a boat... Um, we sent some sailors out and uh, to try and pick up anyone else. You know, as soon as we made, I thought it was probably not going to make it, um, the island. But we sent people out, and it's just been washed. It's like the waves just pounded it and pounded it and broke it down, and it just fell to pieces. And and uh, the crack opened to the point where it, it opened past the island. And water started pouring in, and it just created steam explosions, and mm, the tower fell. And you can feel it when the tower falls. Oh, what is that like? Well, it's a natural occurrence, but it's still just very disappointing. I mean, the countless lifetimes put into creating a power source that could begin to shape the the energy of the, the very planet itself we wouldn't have to go talk to uh, savages we could just invoke it but now we have to go make contact and we have to try to start over again. I don't know if it's going to work, but we have to try. Do you guys have um, guidance from... Yeah, he sends us He sends us messages. Tell me about He, that. she, he, he, he's, he's so stern, I just, I call him a he. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're up there. We, we, every once in a while we can see them. What did they appear as? Very, they're very tall. Um, they look like us, but their features are a little different. They're a little longer, um, less obviously masculine or feminine. It's weird because you know that they love you, but they never really have. They don't have emotions that are expressed like ours. Um, they just have intentions, and their intentions are good. And so what are some of the messages that they send to you? They tell us where we're supposed to build. That's the main thing. And they try not to water it down with extra useless information. They just say, you know, Southwest, look on this grid. You'll find it. And the ones before us got different messages. They got... You're supposed to build a tower. And then they had to figure out what the heck that meant. Oh. Because they weren't, they didn't have the generations of experience that we'd had in books and, right. and recordings. And, and um, we have specialists who look through all of that stuff and piece together the, the intricacy of the history and how we receive communications and, and how we're supposed to interpret them. And it, it was becoming a, a well formed mode of communication for all of us. Interesting. Yeah. So that the ones that give you the messages, do you have a name for them or Ra. Ra. This one. He's the one that talks to to us. Okay. Did he, what was his messages 
right after that huge cataclysm. Do you recall? So he told us to leave. He told us we had to take what we can and go. Okay. So that seemed to be out of his control as well? He's not supposed to interfere with events that are not originating from the surface of the planet or or from the planet it's the planet itself it can come from within the planet that he has jurisdiction over but he can't can't touch the cosmic stuff and the invocations are you able to use those still in this new location mhm mm that's the whole point that's the whole point is to go now we're going to have to set up more because the 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 power from the original tower was very strong and we don't have that anymore. We need to set up more locations. Some of them are going to be small. Some of them are going to be fairly large to try and match the power of the original tower. And you feel these are going to be more in the pyramid structure? Yeah, they're going to be some of them. Some of them are actually, uh, the small ones are, are really just like a, 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 a cube a cube that's um, a solid stone. This is a very small one. We have one already. And it's set on a ley line, um, lined up with the grid, and that's where we're hoping to stem the new city from, much like the old tower, and we'll build upon it. But it starts with a cube. And it's, what's so special about that cube, would you say? The straight lines are really helpful, and and the fact that it's a three-dimensional square shape means that it, it, it represents all three of the dimensions of the physical plane, um, but still contains within it room for the fourth dimension within, which is where the energy comes from. You can't do it with a square. Uh, well, you can actually do surprisingly a lot with a square, considering that it's only one-dimensional. And is that stone made of something, a certain type of stone? To limestone. Limestone is the good, it's a good start. It's plentiful where we are. Okay. And there's some, some moisture content in it that allows us to use it. Is the stone... It won't stay limestone, but that's what's here. Oh, gotcha, okay. Did you say that stone's taller than you or shorter than you? Uh, it's up to my chin. Okay. It's it's just a start. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. Do you feel like as you're getting towards the end of your life, is there somebody that will take over? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've got a council already. And, um, I mean, they have to, they have to sort it out themselves, but they know it's coming. They've, they've begun talking about it, not in front of me. They're, like, trying not to offend me because I can be... I can be mean, um, but they're they're sorting it out, and that's good. That's really good. I'm glad that they're doing it, and and uh, the fact that I'm being stern with them reflects that he's being stern with us, and it means that they're having to get very serious because they're still a little bit afraid of disappointing me, which means that they're going to take their job seriously, and. Because they've got a lot to do. I just have to keep the pressure on them. Okay. Okay. But they don't know how I'm going to go. And that's uh, that's going to be a surprise to them. Really? Mm. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to walk off. They're not going to just disappear. They're just one day, they're going to... It's going to be great. My last trick. Last trick. Okay. <laughs> the last trick. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna wake up one day and they'll just be gone. And... Um, that's really going to reinforce the importance of what they're doing. Wow, okay. Well, then let's do this. Let's leave that scene that you're looking at. Let's drift and float to that last day. And now you're there. And mm. describe for me what's going on. It's, uh... It's pre-dawn. And I'm... Just stepped outside... I'm still in a tent. I felt like it was 
not important not to waste our resources, so I've just stepped outside our tent. One last look at the at the village, which is growing well, I'm very pleased. And um, one last look at the cube. Hmm. I'm I'm climbing on top of the cube and I'm sitting down. Yep, the ultimate, absolute ultimate moment of trust, act of trust. I'm just gonna will myself to the other side. Wow. Okay, I just if you could please describe for me. There's a lot of light. It's golden light. <laughs> and everything around me is uh there's actually a shaft of light coming from the cube. It's beginning to obscure my vision beyond the cube. And there's it's just, it's getting brighter and... That's, that's it. Okay. Now, whatever has happened has happened. You've left that body. Drifted back to the other side. And from that perspective, you can look out over that whole amazing life and know and see everything that was important about it. Every life has lessons and a purpose. What would you say were some of the lessons that you learned in that life? Trust in divinity. No matter what occurs on the face of the earth and or in your life, it's all part of the plan. If you don't trust, you'll never, ever reach your destination. We make it hard for ourselves. We don't really have to, but we're working out the details of uh, life in the third dimension. Very good. Every life has a purpose. What would you say was your purpose in that life? To establish an energy grid that would live past its components on this planet. That once the components deteriorated, that, that the grid was already would already be set up. It would already be um, running with light. That you jumpstart the engine, but then the engine's running. Do you feel you accomplished that? Um, I did my role in it. The the others did they did accomplish it. Eventually. And um, is there anything else about that life as you look through it all that's important to mention? I had love. I had love. From the community? Mm, from my wife. You had a wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. She didn't see me as much as she wanted to. I was busy. Okay. And not nearly as much as I wanted to. But I had I had a job to do and it was expected. Wonderful. Do I have permission to ask questions? All, always. Thank you. I know that you could have brought forth many different experiences and lifetimes for Jeremy to see today. Why did you choose this particular lifetime, Sean? The importance of it. He actually needed to know that he has done important things and it's he's not done. And um, how does, maybe in a little more detail, how does that life that you showed him relate to the current life? The grand scale and picture. He's involved in things that are beyond this planet, and uh, he doubts that. Will you share with us what he is involved in? You call it the Galactic Council. Mm -hmm. um, that's decision-making for things that exist on a very grand scale um, that only only those in spirit form actually are able to comprehend and make decisions on. Mm -hmm. Very good. The island that... Lemuria. Lemuria. Okay, thank you. That was my question. But s <laughs> some people refer to it as Atlantis. There's some confusion 
uh, as to which which existed when and and it doesn't matter to us that's all a time period thing that we don't pay attention to And the land that he went to with the jungles, what area of the planet was that? Mm, which you call South America now, okay. today. Okay. And are some of those pyramids that he was discussing were coming in the future, the ones that have been discovered down there? Yeah, some of them. Some of them have been found, and some of them are were intentionally disassembled. Why would they be intentionally disassembled? They weren't needed anymore, and they would just confuse things as they progressed. Are the ley lines that he worked on still active? Absolutely. All of those grids, that is the only thing that's raising up the planet right now and that it, to the degree that it's going. Wow. A really important foundation work. Yeah, it was. that's why everybody was very stern and very serious about work back then. Now, today, people don't need to be so serious. In fact, perhaps the opposite. They need to be a little more playful a little less serious, and enjoy the ride. Okay. <laughs> we have lots of questions about that ride. Hmm. Uh, anything else about that lifetime that's important for him to know more about? I th think perhaps that that being still exists within him. Um, that that being is continually doing the work. Okay. Um, was there a name for that being at that time? Indra. Indra. Okay. And the books that he took out that had the engineering information, um, did those books survive or did that information survive? Mm, yeah, they, they still exist today. Really? Mm hmm Do you get a sense of where on the planet they are? They're guarded closely by people that think they know what to do with them. It's okay though. They don't they don't know what to do. And that's also part of why um, certain beings uh, in physical form are continually interfering with um, the dark power structures here. Because the dark power structures spent a lot of energy trying to get those books. They were all focused on obtaining the knowledge while the light workers were focused on doing the work. And that was, we used that as part of the strategy. So they were focused on obtaining the knowledge, not knowing, of course, that a key component to operating those manuals is light itself. Trust, divinity, love, the darkness is not capable of those things. So we let the books follow into the, fall into their hands because it wouldn't matter anyway. And that's part of what tipped the scale. How did it tip the scale? They were all focused on obtaining the books while we were focused on doing the work. Do you think those books will fall back into the hands of the light workers? Oh, yeah, it's inevitable. It's another reason why it was an easy decision to make. The light workers don't need them right now. The work is done. The engineering was done. Uh, it'll be nice to have it all on the table, but it's not necessary um, for success. Okay. okay, well, thank you for sharing that. As you know, he came into this session with a list of questions he'd like to have answered. Would it be okay to start in on that list? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, could you go ahead and start a scan of his body? We just want to make sure everything is in its best order. And just tell me where you're focusing on for healing and repair in his body. Mm. Definitely the second chakra. Okay, and what do you see going on with his second chakra? Stagnation, uh, energy that needs to move. What what created that issue to begin with? <laughs> uh, Self-doubt. Okay. Where did that come from? It came from a developing brain in teenage years that was not properly um, 
emotional issues not properly addressed. Okay. And now that he understands that, what is being done on his behalf to heal that shuck and chakra area? Incredible amounts of love being brought into his life, um, but also just energy work and patience. Patience is the best solution. And what would he notice after the session because of that work being done for him? Very little. He won't notice much. That's the point. It's a, it's a healing that occurs uh, peripherally. And the, so the digestive issues that he talked about, will he... Those things will slowly clear up, but in a way that he hardly notices. Okay, so it's just like they'll just kind of get less and less and they're, they'll be gone? Right, exactly. Okay, very good. Yeah, he does need to change his diet, though. Okay, so what would you recommend that he change it? He needs to eat meat less. Not that he needs to stop, but he does need to balance uh, the amount of life he consumes, the amount of conscious life he consumes, compared to vegetative life that he consumes. Okay, so less meat Mm -hmm. and more of anything else? Uh, more um, grains in particular, but, you know, the right grains. Okay. Does he take in enough water for his body? He could do a little more. How much is good for his body each day? A little over a liter would be good. Okay. And so those are the things that he can do to help keep that second chakra in the digestive system in alignment? Yes, the digestive system in particular. Um, The other issues uh, in that area are just energetic. They're not physical. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. And where else in the body are you focusing? The heart. Okay. And what do you see going on with his heart? Concern, worry, uh, just a heaviness that doesn't need to exist. And where does that originate from? Burden of um, responsibility. And what do you want him to know about that? Whatever decision he makes is the right one. And now that he knows that, what are you doing to help heal and support that heart? Love. Incredible amounts of love. That's, it's already working. Do you think he'll feel differently after the session because of that? I hope so. I don't need him carrying around any feelings of burden or exactly worry. No, it's important. It's a, there. There may not be a lot of conscious consideration of what's going on, but it's important that he's able to just move in the right direction. He has to do that by feeling the love. Is he good at feeling the love? Oh, yeah. That's what he's best at. Okay, so easy peasy for him. Yeah, that's not going to be that bad. You just got to stop thinking about the stuff that doesn't matter. Wow, okay, very good. Thank you, thank you. And anywhere else in the body you're looking at? No, he's he's good otherwise. Great, okay. Well, then, I'm going to start with his questions. They are excellent ones. He asks, what is outside the universe? multiverse outside the universe is pure thought the universe itself is simply the third dimension and and the multiverse which is just carbon copies of the universe it's the third dimension it's the dimension of manifested form so outside the universe is pure thought pure Uh, desire um, what you call desire sometimes you call them emotions they're not emotions they're will and thought and it exists in different in a different way than you can comprehend as a as a three-dimensional being so are all the universes that we've found are they similar in that structure 
similar in what structure? That they're the 3D and then... Absolutely. That's the whole point of of the multiverse. It's, it's, uh, it's to establish a manifested form of thought. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. It's the next level. He wonders who created the creator. The creator created himself. It was as a spark of a new idea that came into form, not into form, that came into being simply by need there was a need for the existence of pure love and it popped into existence it came in as an opposite of an energy that dominated and it came in with a single purpose to balance the scales it, it exists because of the the law that requires balance. Are there other creators at that level? Nearly. Love is the highest level. This thing that, that came about is the most brilliant thing that has come to exist in the history of well there is no history ever awesome thank you mm -hmm. he asks when will the good aliens be disclosed to the public they already have actually but they keep they, they, they keep trying to squash it down and um, in fact you'll hear people talk about it on the news and then they'll take it off the news and um so disclosure's already happened, and the point is that it's going to be a process for people to accept it. In fact, the acceptance is the main thing right now. If you could accept it, you'd see them frequently. In fact, the acceptance of them draws them to you because they like, they want to party. They're very excited. <laughs> They're very excited. Well, we're very excited. They like they found a new best friend. Yes. Um, the best friend's kind of like. Well, the best friend isn't necessarily as smart as them, but they're that's okay. <laughs> they're really excited still, and uh, they, they may not be as smart as them, but they're so much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the savages thought of his group when they landed. <laughs> Precisely. Pre well, no, not quite. They didn't. They were like. They were a little dark. The <laughs> savages were a little dark. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, just for the record, they're welcome to come in here anytime. And, and well, they do, actually. <laughs> they they think your shop is pretty cool. Oh, good. <laughs> they're looking through the windows frequently. <laughs> they just they don't want to like you know, they don't want to change anything. They're not trying to affect anything or invade anyone's privacy. But they are watching. All right. Well, the invitation's open always. Okay. Just for public record. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so he asks, are his memories of previous UFOs real? Yes. Uh, and they are significant. Um, especially the first one. The first one was there uh, because it had been in previous times visiting him. Okay. And it was traveling to this particular time because it's like... Um, a chronologer. It's it's tracking this particular soul's movement and uh, and, and creating a story that goes into into the, um, the it goes into records for people to learn from. So his his life is being tracked for those records. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not all lives, but many lives are. Okay. They, they don't have enough. Um, they don't have enough aliens <laughs> to go around and track every person. And how is it that he was picked to be one of the ones that is tracked, I wondered? Uh, it has to do with his early lives and, and the significance of them and, and to see how um, 
a soul can incarnate in a significant role and then incarnate in other roles of varying significance. I don't want to say insignificant because there isn't one that's insignificant. But how a soul can work through lives that seemingly are less significant perhaps to achieve even more powerful things but things that don't exist on the third in the third dimension okay understood and then he wonders about that has he had more contact than he remembers definitely and share with us as much about that as you can please uh, there's been more viewings more um connection and there's way more um, connection based from an energy form and things that he took as thoughts or um, ideas that if he really explored he would see faces he would see he would know names there's a deeper energy connection there and how could he do that if you desired to well, the same way any of us can if we desire to, which is um, full immersion, total, complete, um, vulnerable trust, totally uh, engaging both sides of your brain equally, but... pure trust and it has to come from love love is actually the the force that um, catalyzes the, it's the catalyst for any power that you wish to to explore yeah. from the light there's other motivators that can be used there's other engines but you, know, you don't want to touch those Okay, very good. And um, he would like to know if he has gifts in the way of channeling, astral projection, etc. Yes, yeah, he always has. And what is important for him to know about those gifts? He should only use them if and when he's ready. If there's any doubt, then it's going to be less than a waste of time. It'll be deleterious. So he asks, how is he supposed to be using these gifts? Actually, he can use them to continue um, to continue work with the grid. The grid is laid, it's, it's growing, it's um, it's glowing, actually. Mm -hmm. It's all around the planet. And if he wants, he can tap into that now and draw from it. That's the whole point of setting it up. So he doesn't need, he doesn't need to think solutions up anymore if he doesn't want to. He can plug in and download. But he's going to have to trust it. That's the whole key. You, you know, you have to listen to your heart. And that lifetime that you showed him gave him that memory again. Of That's exactly why. It's going to make more sense. Nice. And I would imagine, especially as he listens to that recording, more memories from that time will come back? Probably. Potentially. And when he trusts and uses the grid in that way, what do you think he'll notice differently in his life? Oh, just flow. Everything's going to work. Um, he, he won't have to... I mean, what's the point of worry? He won't need to worry. He'll plug in. He'll download. He'll do. He won't even have to think. He won't be wasting energy. It's going to work perfectly. And, see, he's not allowed to know he's not allowed to see the future but with this he won't need to see the future he'll be the future 
in the moment. You just let go and everything lines up, all the timelines, all the possibilities, all the best possible outcomes. And with the engine being love, then it'll just create incredible amounts of love, joy, happiness, etc. And that's not just him. It's supposed to be everybody. That's the thing right now. All the people that are in the world going crazy are not plugged in. And right now they're not being fed by the other source of energy that was there. It's like... Uh, oh, how to explain? Who has landlines anymore? Right. <laughs> okay, they're all on cell phones now. So uh, some people are picking up the landlines and they don't get a dial tone and it freaks them out. They're going crazy. They just need to they just need to plug into the new grid. Okay. It almost sounds like the new earth in a way. Oh, it's all about the new earth. Absolutely. 100%. It's that's you're going to you are you came at the right time. You are going to like what you're going to see. <laughs> Can you give us um, some previews of that? Previews. You're going to see uh, a unity occur worldwide. Right now, everyone is looking in the wrong directions, trying to pick, you know, like, what's, what's happening. But if you actually look underneath the surface, consult your heart, you'll know that unity is coming. And it will be... Unlike anything that's the world has ever seen before. It's it's all been culminating up till this point. And so what creates that moment where the unity is Well that's a surprise now, isn't it? <laughs> I mean if you know then it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't happen. I mean you can't you can't mess with the timeline. <laughs> I can just say you're in the right timeline. Okay. So this should happen within his lifetime? It's, yes. It's already started. It's actually almost there. Oh. Uh, it won't, um, it's not going to be one of these events that's cataclysmic, that changes and everything is just like, you know, the foundation. It's not dramatic. Um, but historically, you know, it, like, two generations from now, they're going to look back and they're going to recognize this as the most important time in world history. Wow. You think, what will they talk about two generations from now, about this time? They'll talk about how everybody thought it was going to end, but none of them realized it was going to end the way that started the best possible new beginning. Sounds like a real cliffhanger. <laughs> Edge of the seat, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we like a good show. We do like a good show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Mm. He would like to know, what is God's goal for his creation? God's goal for his creation is, well, if you go back to the inception of God, it's all love, it's all perfection, it, uh, perfect light, perfect form, perfection in form. God's goal is to create that perfection in the third dimension, thereby having a form which can hold more power than any other thought. And there, from there, just growing, exploring more, playing. I mean, it's the pinnacle, it's the zenith, it's love. What's better than that? Nothing. It's just time to explore now. And we've almost, almost completely overthrown everything but. And then it'll just be the, the, sh the shadows of the memories of, of anything but. And a few generations from now, those won't even, won't even be remembered. That's the brilliance of the human amnesia. Oh, tell me more about that. Well... The great thing about human amnesia is you can work through their hearts then. You can, you can communicate with even one open heart can bring it in to the world. And they have to trust. They have to be a little baby. You know, they have to be taken care of. 
but they can still accomplish that that goal that we have for them. If they could remember, well, then you can't create anything. You can't create the change that you need to create if everyone remembers everything because, well, it's already done, right? There's nothing else to do then. With the amnesia, there's the exploration that, that can occur. Ah, I understand. And that's how you create new ideas. It's, a, it's an idea mill. It's a, uh, it's a way to generate um, new facets of the initial inception of, of love. You can create new little intricacies of what love is. And you can't do that if everyone remembers from the beginning. You just keep repeating the same process if you already know. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, so it's there on purpose it, for God's benefit. And the, the, the poor humans don't know that, but they are like God's favorite toy, God's favorite little playmate, because they get to, <laughs> they get to fall in love every time Aww. they're very lucky and they hate it <laughs> well from from the perspective from the humans it does it seems like what the heck you know mm. why do we forget and yeah this is why the aliens are just th- now they're lit up they're super excited because <laughs> they come down here and it's just like this new playmate every every lifetime they get to experience love all over again and the whole universe gets to experience it because of human amnesia it was god's greatest idea <laughs> it really was well coming from a human i'll be really happy to not have the amnesia <laughs> <laughs> trust me you wouldn't you would cease to exist yeah. i mean you just then you just go over and you're you're over here doing the work which is great but without the little play things it is boring as hell let me tell you. <laughs> Actually, wouldn't at this point of our evolution, it wouldn't even have a purpose. Right. We would cease to exist. Well, it's we, pretty exciting to for people to start remembering and, and create the better sure, ideas. Sure. Bits and pieces don't interfere with the overall um, experiment. Right, right. So would you say that this experiment is about complete? Oh, no. No, it's just begun. The experiment, and it's, oh, I mean... So, because of this amnesia, we are now able to keep the thing growing. You know, it, it's, it, the law of entropy is very important. It's, an, it's one of the laws of the universe. So, if we didn't create the human amnesia at the point of, uh, of spiritual evolution within the third dimension, then the universe would have to collapse, just like Einstein said. It would have to fall back in on itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... It was the law of what again? Law en- entropy. Entropy. Okay, entropy. Thank you. But because the humans are continually having a new experience, there's more to explore. I mean, it it will never cease. Now it will never end. It's it's a continual cycle of exploration, due to the human amnesia. Don't mistake that though, with. Um, knowledge of the other side and and connection with the other side human beings will connect with the other side we will we will become in more direct um, communication with the humans but it'll be in the way as illustrated through Indra's story it'll be you will know in your heart not in your mind cool okay that sounds like a lot of fun it's way better (laughs) And would you say we're close to? Yeah, it's already that? started. It's like it's like a wave that's washing over the world right now, mm. and it's already started. <clears throat> you'll you'll feel it. You you have probably already felt it, and uh, it, everyone is going going to feel it. Some people aren't going to understand it at all. It's okay. It'll be fine. A couple generations, everyone will be living from it, so it won't even matter. Wow. That's cool. But those who are sensitive will start living from it immediately. You can, I mean, it's there. You can tap in. You can plug in. You can enjoy the show already. You just have to stop, uh, you have to stop thinking about it from your head. It's, it's all going to come through your heart, and you're going to have this amazing story. It's like you get to be the main, you get to be the star of your own movie. 
every time you come back. Beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're lucky. Not everybody gets that. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, lots to think on there. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, although we've talked a bit about the body, I just want to go over some other questions that he had, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So he asked about the digestive system, which we've talked a little bit about, but specifically the heartburn and the gas. Is there anything there that can help um, calm all of that down? It was all anxiety. Okay. It's, it's all anxiety. It still is residual anxiety. And you said that's being healed? and It's being healed. It's being healed through love. It's being healed through um, the, the, the trust process. Trust is, you know, this particular lifetime, he's supposed to learn how to trust again. It's, it's like full circle, going from someone who wrote the book on trust, trusting the divine, to someone who now needs to learn it all over again. Understood. Thank you. It's also why he was given this particular brain. Oh, tell us more about that, please. Um, the genetic lines that he's come in on are very uh, hardcore realists. But his spirit is not not a hardcore realist. His spirit is all divinity. It's all um, creativity. And so we put him into that form so that he could take the the most hardcore brain and turn it into um, a vehicle for trust and it's, it's just one more one more way to um, maximize the energy output of the grid wow okay very good that's i mean we gave it gave him that job because he, he can do it <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty amazing yeah do you think that will surprise him at all? Mm, deep, deep, deep down inside, he already knows. So may maybe, yeah, maybe. He asks about um, wanting all of his allergies completely healed. They actually already are. To explain he, that, he hasn't had an allergic reaction in a year and a half. Okay, so it's done in the past. Yeah, he's just doubting that it is. I mean, he doesn't need to doubt. That doesn't help, right? Yeah, nobody needs to doubt anything. <laughs> okay, so all complete, finished with that experience. Yes. Perfect. He wonders why is he always in a money struggle and how can he create financial abundance as a normal state in his life? The money struggle is twofold. One, he has willed into existence something that is monumental and that requires a lot of resources and he did it from nothing so he started at nothing he shouldn't be concerned about whether or not he's still at nothing because he, it doesn't matter he can generate out of nothing and two he is clearing a hereditary genetic pattern of struggle with resource that's occurred on his mom's side. It's not always manifest in the form of money, but in this case it's most convenient for him for it to be manifest in the form of money. Uh, it has everything to do with um, faith and curing anxiety in human form. Okay, so if he can follow that, he'll notice a switch and a change? Yeah, I mean, I hate to be a broken record, but plug into the grid and you're fine. And the best way for him to plug into the grid is what? Through his heart. Through his heart. Through his heart, not through his head. Trust. Let go. Okay. That's the hard part for him, actually. He has a hard time letting go because he's learned... Uh, He's had a lot of people around him that don't know what the hell they're doing. And he's his ego has decided that it needs to, to grab onto something and push it forward if it's going to survive at all. And um, for a time that was really necessary, 
and we allowed the ego to do that. But now it's time for the ego to take a back seat. And, you know, he can, the ego can just take a little break here for a couple years. And Jeremy can just start to open his heart and relax, plug into the grid, and follow his intuition. Listen for that voice that isn't going to make sense, but you know is right. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. He wonders, what's the best way to resolve their relationship with the ladies? Partnership. It's important to bring them in so they can decide if they want in or to go out. He needs to stop holding them at arm's length. He needs to take them by the hand and say, this is the job. Do you want it? And then they have the opportunity to decide for themselves what is right and what is done. And if they choose to not be a part of it, what's the best way for all involved for that to dissolve? Peaceably would be best. The best way for it to dissolve will come from them. Okay. They have to consult their higher selves. It's a big deal. It's, it's, It's an important choice to make. And it's not one that he should make alone. Okay, so everybody needs to come to their own resolve with it. This partnership was named after LM for a reason. It exists as a bond of the energy that she came here to anchor. The partnership is not just a company. And it's okay for that partnership to go in whatever direction it needs to. But all involved must consult their higher selves. They've done very well so far. Do you think they'll be open to that as, if has, as he presents it like that? Yes. That, that, they will have no problem understanding that. Perfect. He wonders if they should move south for the winters. Please, God. Do. <laughs> Are you telling me the high self doesn't like the cold weather either? The high self is fine with all weather. <laughs> we just want to hear him quit bitching. <laughs> My lord. It, it, the whole idea is happiness. Happiness, happiness, happiness. Take a, take a risk. Take a leap of faith. Do the thing that's in your heart. It it doesn't have to scare you. In fact, we recommend that you don't do the thing that scares you. Do the thing that excites you. And, And don't be concerned with too many of the details. He needs to remember his trip to L.A. Where he shows up and gets automatically upgraded to the to the BMW convertible. He doesn't have to pay a cent more when he's worried about money. Now he's got a convertible. He can drive up the coast of Malibu. And with the top down, put the top up, go into the coffee shop. It starts pouring cats and dogs. He and his wife drink their coffee. And it stops raining right when they're done. (laughs) What more does he want? (laughs) Sounds like a pretty perfect environment. Yeah, would he like a script? Does he want us to mail him a script? (laughs) Better not ask that. He might say yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, he would say yes at this point. We'll see. (laughs) So he wonders where would be best for them to establish their home base. There are a few different places, a few different energy lines that would be good for them. And uh, he's drawn to the right ones. He should... He's got a few choices ahead of him, and either one of them are great. And they definitely all involve being south. And he wonders, could it be on a boat? It could definitely be on a boat. That's one of his one of his options. If he takes that path, 
he will have incredible adventure. And it's going to be hard work, too. It's, he'll earn his adventure. If he takes the other path, it'll be easier, it'll be quieter, it'll be more of a suburb's life. Um, but it'll be wonderful. So both are good. Yeah. At this point in the history of mankind, any path you take is going to be good. Some, some people are going to take the long way around, but it will end up good. But right now, if you're if you're riding the wave on critical mass, you're good. You're going to be fine, and, and whatever you choose is going to be great. I mean, he could choose to stay up north too, but he just won't be as happy. Okay. Okay. And he asks, "Is there a soul wanting to be their child?" There are a lot of souls wanting to be their child. They're a very popular couple. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's really... Everything has to be in place for that to happen in a way that's um, that's going to be the highest possible outcome. So is there anything they can do? They, they can want- make their decisions faster. Decisions like what, what? Well, like where they want to live and what they want to do and if they want to start new businesses and all that stuff. They can make their decisions faster if they want a child in their lives. Okay. And if they decide either way, is there one that's better for them than another, would you say? The child will bring them great joy. but they won't externalize as much of their creative side. So there's a balance there. Yes, I mean, there's always a balance, but um, their soul doesn't have to this time around. It's not a contract. It's a, it's like a, um, a footnote on the contract. You could have this, um... But it's like a perk that they can choose or or not. So they can externalize themselves in multiple facets and create many different um, opportunities in their lives. Or they can have this wonderful little being that comes into their lives that they totally love, that loves them, and it takes the rest of their time. It takes their, all of their love, all of their effort and energy. So they can put their, all of their eggs in that one basket, or they can put their eggs in the other basket. Okay. Both great decisions, it sounds like. Yes. Both will be successful lives. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, no clear answer on that one. That's okay. That's, that's all right. Appreciate what you can give us. Um, he wonders, is the Mandela effect real? You better believe it. And tell us from your perspective what you know about it. So, when the universe was created, when the multiverse was created, all of these different experiments were being run at the same time, under the same laws, the same conditions, with an infinite number of possible outcomes. And then the one universe which had the best outcome, the the universes begin to consolidate. They begin to gravitate towards the universe that's having the best outcome. This has been happening for eons. And uh, here's the kicker. It doesn't mean that the, the multiverse will disappear. It actually means new new multiverses, new, new universes uh, are grown, are created, just stemming from the most successful timeline. So when you have something like the Mandela Effect... What's happening is multiple universes converging on one timeline, because that timeline is currently the most successful of all timelines. So in this case, you have many, many different universes converging on your universe, because it's the most successful universe in the multiverse for this particular timeline that's ever occurred. And it's sprouting out new universes, new alternate timelines faster than than you could count if you had a way of counting them which you don't at this time 
and it's just amazing because it, it went from like a lot of uh, a lot of universes engaged in lower energies lower um just darker stuff to all of a sudden this one just starts really shooting up and they all start just folding into that one and it's pushing out new universes at the same time which is another part of the Mandela effect that has not been thoroughly considered by humans yet is that not not only is it universes converging on one it's new universes being created at the same time so for instance this whole question of when Nelson Mandela died, it's, it's almost irrelevant because in, in one universe he died at a certain time and then, boom, a new timeline split off of that where he actually lived longer and accomplished more in his life. And which one did you live in? It doesn't matter because you're actually a part of both. It, it's, it's only relevant to, to the bean counters. And so how do you, would you say there's a way that we can use that understanding in our current lives to better ourselves? Well, there's a few lessons I think that can be taken at this time. One, um, everything you think you know is constantly changing. It's malleable. The, the nature of the universe isn't nearly as hard as you think it is. Um, there are laws that apply, but you really only know like four of the laws that apply to the universe. It's there's so many more, and as you begin to study uh, quantum physics, you'll understand that just observing anything changes the nature of the observed. Well, that's just that's just a, a minor, 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 minor detail that explains the constant malleability of the universe. So. Remember that things change all the time. And do not become attached to something you think is rock solid. It's only one rock solid thing in the universe, and it's the very nature of the universe itself. The inception, the creation of love. God. That's it. It's the only thing that is the foundational law of the universe. Everything else is an offshoot and can change as needed. So interesting. So how was the construct of love created, I wonder? It was create the construct of love was created as an answer to the construct of its opposite. So in the thought realm, we'll call it, there was primarily only the opposite of love. And that opposite of love became death eventually, stagnant to the point of non-growth. And when something becomes stagnant to the point of non-growth, that spark of life comes out of it. That's why all the laws of nature act the way they do. That which is dead gives birth to new life. And love was the new life. Love was what was called for in answer to its opposite, which is what existed before. Wow. Okay. So it doesn't... Outside of the universe is not what you think it is. There are no physical boundaries outside of this universe. You can't take a spaceship and fly outside of the universe. It's all energy. It's thought it's not three-dimensional, which is the nature of what he was asking. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Side note, he should think beyond just three-dimension. Actually, that'll help him plug in to the grid. Explain that in as much detail as you can. Being too concerned with three-dimensional objects is fruitless. Uh, it's not that it's fruitless. There's time and a place. It's that... It's, it's got a dead end, you know. You, you need to consider what's behind the three-dimensional object. What's in the fourth dimension? What makes you feel the way you feel? What makes you think the thoughts you think? Not exactly what you occur in your given day. 
what you encounter in a given day. It doesn't matter if you get yelled at by someone or if you bump into a person and apologize. That, that That's not what matters. What matters is what is going on behind that. What feelings occurred that drew to drew you to bumping into that person and inside them as well and between you as well because there's a lot of life between people all that stuff matters that's what he should be concerned with okay do you think that will surprise him yeah I think that when he's gonna actually he's gonna slap his forehead <laughs> he's already doing it okay <laughs> Well, that's what we're here for. We mm-hmm. want, want to get all this information that makes us slap our heads. We mm-hmm. deeply appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a good head slap is, uh, well, it's a good laugh for us, too. <laughs> he says his head is extra thick, so he can take some good you slaps. You definitely got that one on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But that's okay. We use that to our advantage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. He asks, is his dear friend Cheryl involved in his path still? Sporadically, sometimes. Only because it's not necessary. He's doing just fine on his own. Okay. And he wonders, is she pleased? Definitely. Actually, over the moon, she did not expect... She did not expect uh, her plan to actually work as well as, as it did. She really thought that um, that nobody was listening to her. Aww. She she knew that he was listening. She didn't know if he was gonna do much with it. Okay. And does she have directions for him? Live for yourself. You've already lived for everyone else. It's 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 you time. That's actually. That's the stage we're at. You will be serving humanity by serving yourself at this point because if you plug in, you're adding your power to the entire grid. If you listen to that voice inside you, it's going to lead you to great places and everyone's going to follow down that path. You're, you're blazing a pathway ahead. Just, just do what you want to do. He wonders, was she indeed an incarnation of Christ consciousness? Mm, One of many. One of many. There were many people um, who got to carry that burden for this last leg of the journey. Uh, They got to complete the cycle of um, the sacrifice and redemption of Christ on a multi-lifetime scale. Wow. Does he know others that carry that? Everyone carries that to a degree, Mm -hmm. so technically yes, but otherwise no. Those people operated in secret. They were not supposed to be known. Okay, understood. Too much interference. Okay. And he wonders, was it right to close the restaurant? Yes, that was a big part of of, um, freeing him up. He, he he needed to get out of that uh, constant in the trenches, never looking up, always just doing the thing in front of him. He he, he, was, he was totally going to dead end his life in no time at all. Okay. And it would have been he could have he, he could have overcome it, but it would have been just against the grain, you know. Yeah. And he wonders should they pursue a third floor on the hotel? Eventually, yes. I mean, if they want to. Yes, there's there's a really good opportunity there. Um, when the time is right, it'll all dovetail nicely with um, the potential ventures that they are, are hoping to achieve. Good. And are there any business opportunities that are good or necessary to pursue? He's going to have to listen closely as these opportunities come up. There are some that look great that are duds. Um, And then there are some that seem like maybe he only half is interested that he should really do. 
Um, one thing you should definitely do is whatever he can to support Plamena. She is starting to externalize herself in ways that he already understands um, to a degree. And whatever he chooses to support her on, he'll be the number two. He won't be the number one. He's going to love that, actually. <laughs> and it's going to be better than anything he could come up with on his own. It's going to be fantastic. So she can kind of lead the business opportunities that are coming up? Yeah, she'll she'll need structure that he can provide. But it will be coming through her heart. It will be her baby, and he gets to protect and and see some of the trials and tribulations through. And he'll be good at that. Okay. And in fact, he'll feel just great giving that to her. Aw, nice. Okay, and he wonders, should he be more involved in politics, local or otherwise? There's a pathway he could take. But it's... It's... If he wants to be mobile, if he wants the adventure, he should not do that. He's served enough. If he wants to continue to serve, no one's going to stop him. But he's, he's, he's made enough sacrifices, and it's, it's time for him to understand that the way forward, from this point on, for everyone involved in the new earth, if he wants to be at the cutting edge, he needs to actually be indulging in his heart's desire. Mm. He needs to be doing what he wants to do, whatever that is, crazy as it may be, asinine as it may seem, that's what he's supposed to do. And that actually begins to create an energy pathway that will magnetically draw others down the same way. Watch. If he makes a change, he starts doing something from his heart, he'll start seeing other people just like gravitate onto that path in their lives as well. And it's just because of the interconnectedness of things. Okay. So, and this goes for everyone, anyone who wants to do this. Plug in, get the job done by doing you. Perfect. It's kind of like a wave shower, too, and to a degree, isn't it, of showing others how oh, to yeah. use yeah. that well, energy? Well, Cheryl called him a vanguard. If he wants to keep being the vanguard, you blaze ahead. It's mm -hmm. just the problem is now, it's all going to be fun stuff. <laughs> so he's going to have to learn how to cope with that. Oh, well, that couldn't be the worst problem he's ever faced in his no, life. No, it'll be the best problem he's ever faced. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to have problems of too much fun than not enough fun. Perfect. Well said. And he wonders, is it important to pursue producing his short story, A Christmas Wish? And how should he start that journey? Well, we think so. <laughs> we think, in general, there's a real lack of, of positive voices right now. Mm -hmm. Um that particular story is is uh, a return to a heart line that once existed on a massive scale. And, um, you know, the voice, the loud voice of the West has been dominated recently by darkness. They think it's going to give them some power. It's backfiring badly. And there's a window of opportunity for him to to slip in there and and, and um, make something happen with that that he'll find enjoyment from and that actually m many others will as well. It would be a good thing. Perfect. Okay. Um, is there anything that he didn't ask that you wish he would have? He really didn't ask about his about his purpose in this life. Okay, so please share with us what you can about that. His purpose in this life is to, with eyes wide open, anchor love in a big way. It would be on the scale 
of the previous life we explored with Indra, but not it's not going to be buildings. It's not going to be being a community leader. It's going to be energetic, and it actually has the potential for opening up some of these new universe branches, some of these new things that if he doesn't do, won't open. They just, nobody else is going to do that. So if he learns how to trust and how to love and care and follow the voice, the, the still small voice inside your heart, to the letter, I mean, the more he can trust that voice, take the lesson that Jesus gave about walking on water. I'm not saying that he should try that right now because he probably won't make it, but <laughs> that lesson, that lesson of listening to that voice, if he trusts that, if he can stop his analytical mind from dominating the conversation, he will achieve a greatness energetically that will be open up possibilities that um, otherwise won't happen. Very cool. Okay. And when he made this appointment, what was it that you hoped he received from it? Exactly what he's getting now. That's that's what he's supposed to get. He didn't even he didn't even really have many expectations. For him he thought that this was going to be a nice exploration and then the closer he got to the date the the more his ego began to activate and he it, it 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 knew that it didn't have the answers that were going to be provided and it was really good because it kind of opened him up on the other side he, he's able to listen good okay good well it's speaking of which um and then there is me who forgot to put it, their appointments down in my book so <laughs> that was a little funny <laughs> From well, that was <laughs> what was going on with that. That was actually because he was too nervous. He was blocking his own energy pathway, and when you're when you weren't here, he had to walk through his own trust issues and empower himself to push through a barrier. So you were actually just assisting oh. in that, so good job. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Small freak out, but okay. I mean, it's all, right. It all turns out no. fine. And, and it made him more comfortable, mostly because he empowered himself, but also because he could see you as, uh, as a person who honors their word and who is not um, dangerous in any way. Oh, okay. Well, that good. Was, that was an important thing. Yeah, no, this is this is the this makes me so happy to be here with him. So I'm I'm so mm -hmm. grateful that it was there and um, that everything worked out ultimately just fine for it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> it's it always will. Okay. Um, gosh. Um, anything else that you can think about that would be beneficial for him to know? It's been said mostly, but you know, he, he just needs to needs to listen to his heart and really be about his business. Okay. Um, oh, anything about his connection to his beautiful wife? Oh, he's very lucky. He's very lucky. She she has a, a she has a connection directly to source. And her particular ego is um, very protective. It's very developed, and it dominates her mind's conversation. But her connection to source actually powers him, and and it, it draws him to to together with her to um, to protect her from the voices from the egos incessant chatter and it creates a union that's fabulous that's amazing awesome okay and that's very powerful okay and they have a good balance between their energies they're masculine and feminine they're both willing to play whichever role needs to be played have they had other lifetimes together 
Yes, multiple. And always on Earth or other places? They've had multiple lifetimes on Earth, and they share a home together energetically. So, not on other planets. They're very focused. They love the amnesia because they get to fall in love all over again every time. <laughs> so they're they're big on that. They kind of book their vacations here. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they do exist together uh, across the other side. Wow. Okay, and. Just because people are sometimes curious, um, tell him who you speak as. How would you define yourself? I speak as a very close connection to the source. An energy which is as close to the purity of love as possible while still having words. And how was the process for choosing the life that you showed him today? I'm just curious. Do you mean uh, the process for choosing Indra's, the, for writing the contract? Yeah, for, for allowing him to, to, or picking that lifetime for him to I witness see. today. For showing the life. Yeah. Well, that decision doesn't get made lightly, especially in this case because that's something that's long forgotten. Mm-hmm. We had to really think of, about all the particular issues that are going on right now in his life as well as in the world. And energetically, that one fit really nicely. And it's it's one of the more significant lives that he's had. And uh, it's important to know who he is and where he came from. And and um, every life thereafter has been very important. It's been very imperative, but none have been as obvious upon looking as that one was. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, how often would you recommend that he listens to his recording to get the most benefit? He should listen to it every time he forgets about it. Mm-hmm. He should he should think about it, listen to it, and then put it in a drawer. And then at one point he'll be like, oh, yeah, I need to listen to my... And then he needs to listen to his recording. And when he does that, what benefit will he receive from it? It'll be the same thing as, as human amnesia. He will be hearing it as if it's new every time doesn't mean he can't listen to it a little more often than that if he's, you know, some particular thought that's going on in his mind that he needs to resolve. That might not be a bad idea, but he should not dwell on it or focus on it excessively. He should allow the words to do their work, be about his business, and then once he remembers it, then he needs to pop it in and listen to it. Perfect. Do you think he's felt aware throughout this process today? Mm-hmm. And from your it's actually throwing him off. Is it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, from your perspective, what's up with with this feeling aware during these sessions? Well, it's throwing everyone off. Feeling aware. I mean, it can almost be skewed as arrogance, and that's part of the point. You're supposed to walk through the knowing that you are not just you, that you are more than you, and you're supposed to be able to do it confidently. You're supposed to be able to hit that zone fully awake, fully aware, bring in the light, bring in God's voice, trust yourself, and all the while your ego watches. That's the whole point. That's why the ego came into existence, was to create this moment, this confidence of knowing that you can be directly connected to God and you don't need the the devil on your shoulder. He's going to try everything to get you away from it. He's going to try everything he can to, to 
explain away what it is. But if you can do it, hearing that voice, he won't need to exist in that way anymore. Your ego will evolve as well. Your ego will evolve with you. It will no longer be concerned about your physical survival, which is he's, he can't wait for. The ego cannot wait for that. The ego really just wants to be the, the, the devil's advocate, the, the voice that's causing you to grow and question in higher ways. It's just right now you're all concerned with, you know, eating, <laughs> living, you know, not getting shot on the streets of Chicago. And rightly so, because any of those things kind of cut short your vacation. <laughs> so it's good. It's good, this awareness. Yep, the awareness is good. The awareness is like, it. it's part of, um, it's an essential element in bringing you to that next level. You're supposed to be aware. You're supposed to be walking through that self-doubt. You're supposed to be willing to be vulnerable and experience all of that with an eyes wide open. Nice. And when we get acclimated to that, then what is our our life? Well, like? then you'll be able to, if you want to, you will be a creator on an extreme level. I mean, right now, people are focused on imagining a new car into their lives, right? Mm -hmm. Well, con congratulations. That's awesome. That's That's kindergarten stuff. <laughs> Once you can, with eyes wide open, connect to the source, you'll liter literally be able to create matter before your very eyes. You can will into existence. You can walk on water. This, this, these are the things that are currently beyond human capability only because of the limitations of our mind. They tried to teach this lesson 2,000 years ago. And it just thudded on deaf ears. <laughs> That's all a process. Time doesn't matter. Now we're at a stage. Now we can do it. N now, if you want to, you can. <laughs> well, pretty wild show we're participating can, can in. Be as wild as you make it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, my gosh, um, it is such an honor to assist in this way. So thank you, thank you, thank you mm -hmm. for um, creating this uh, day for us. Mm -hmm. um, you created it, but that's, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take ownership. Mm -hmm. Good, good. That's good. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have a final message that you would like to give before I bring him back up? I feel like I've said everything that, that he needs and wants to hear. Let me, hang on, let me consult. Okay. The farther you reach, the better it'll be. Reach out there. Grab something big and bring it down. Beautiful. All right. Very good. Well, thank you again for coming so through so clearly and beautifully and sharing so much information mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure anytime. Mm -hmm. <laughs>